Hi everyone, uh, this is uh, the course SS657A. Uh, the course instructor is Professor Mark Crowley. I'm Benjamin Rojok, the TA and presenter of slides. This is the lecture on local linear embedding. Okay, uh, as uh, I said in previous slides, uh, when we have nonlinear pattern of data, uh, in order to handle nonlinearity of data, you should either have a nonlinear method or we should transform data uh, to a feature space or a Hilbert space, in other words, to kernelize, in order hoping that the pattern of data becomes linear in that uh, Hilbert space. Uh, why? Because consider this example, this ex the credit of this example is for Professor Alibotsi. You can see here we have a nonlinear manifold in uh, figure A. Uh, as you can see, uh, the points are on this nonlinear manifold. Uh, the correct unfolding of this manifold is shown in figure B, where you can see that the, the points, the distances of points on the manifold are preserved. Uh, however, when we apply a linear method on this nonlinear manifold, uh, it ruins the manifold. It doesn't unfold it correctly and becomes like uh, figure C, where uh, the green point and red point fall on, on each other, although they were far away from each other. In other words, it doesn't care uh, about the geodesic distance or the distance on the manifold. Uh, but, so. We should, when we have nonlinear data, it's better to use a nonlinear uh, method or we transform data. A local linear embedding is a nonlinear method. It doesn't transform data. It, it's a linear nonlinear method itself. Okay, uh, it was proposed in 2000 uh, in the same journal that Isomap was proposed. Uh, the idea of, is, of LLE is locally, local embedding or p local piecewise embedding how it's similar the idea of uh, LLE is similar to the idea of uh, uh, piecewise SP line regression it says that assume I have a, a nonlinear manifold in, shown in this figure and then I divide this manifold uh, into linear uh, into pieces small pieces and then I unfold uh, manifold piecewise like I put this part here then I put this part uh, close to it I'm unfolded it piecewise and then this here I do it for all pieces and then this nonlinear manifold has been unfolded to so this nonlinear 2d manifold has been unfolded to uh, a 1d why because its intrinsic dimensionality is one uh, so what is intrinsic dimensionality? I tell you, it means that uh, why is it uh, a line? Because when you put an ant on it, a small uh, assume you put an a small ant on this nonlinear manifold, it doesn't see the the whole structure of manifold. It's very small. It just see uh, what is in front of it. It when it goes, moves, moves, moves. Finally, it reaches to the to the end of this uh, nonlinear manifold. So it's similar to a line. It is uh, traversing a line. Uh, however, if for example, if it was a, a circle, if uh, uh, you put an ant here, it goes, goes and comes back to where it was. So the intrinsic dimensionality of the circle is two. Also, the intrinsic dimensionality of a knot is two. Why? The, uh, the knots are oh, very uh, useful in theoretical physics, especially in string theory or M theory. Uh, if you put uh, an ant on this uh, knot, it goes here, 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 here. It doesn't see the structure of manifold. It just goes forward and then finally it comes back to where it was. Therefore, the knot this knot, its intrinsic dimensionality is also two. It's like a, a sphere. So this is the concept of intrinsic dimensionality, and we want to unfold 
the manifold to its intrinsic dimensionality. Uh, and uh, as I said, local linear embedding, uh, its idea is piecewise unfolding. So it has three steps. First, it constructs k nearest neighbor graph. Uh, like here, for example, in this figure one, it's, uh, it selects the neighbors. Uh, consider for every point xi, it finds its neighbors, nearest neighbors. And here, k is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8. k is 8 in this figure. So it finds the uh, nearest neighbors of this point. And then uh, it says, in step 2, it says that uh, I want to f uh, find how each point is reconstructed by its neighbors. Or in other words, I want to reconstruct every point by its neighbors using a linear combination. So for example, xi is a, a weight multiplied by its first neighbor plus another weight multiplied by its second neighbor until all uh, this summation goes until all k neighbors. And for every point we do that. So we see how every point is reconstructed linearly by its ne nearest neighbors. Then in the third uh, step it says we, now we come to the low dimensional subspace. So here it was, consider this, here it was a uh, high dimensional data, input data. Now in the low dimensional subspace we say we use the same weights in order to construct every point. We use the same weight in order to construct every point, but in, in the low dimensional space, not in the original space. So this is the idea of LLE, which is also, as you can see, it is a local embedding. It, it does this piecewise. So for some data set notations we show here, we have a training data set. Uh, we uh, denote every point by xi. The dimensionality of data is d. We assume we have n data points. And uh, uh, here, we assume the vectors are column vectors and we p uh, in matrices we put vectors column wise so if we put the vectors column wise we will have a matrix capital X of data set uh, which is D by N. Uh, we denote the jth node of Xi by Xij where J goes from 1 to K uh, and if we put them column wise X capital I uh, shows the neighbors, the k neighbors of xi, which is uh, a d by k matrix. We also have a test data set uh, or out of sample data set w which is not uh, used for uh, finding the weights in the LLE. Uh, we denote the ith data test data point by xit superscript t. We assume that we have nt test uh, samples. And if we put them column wise together, capital XT is the test data set, which is a D by NT matrix. And uh, we consider the training neighbors, not test neighbors, training neighbors of XIT by, uh, we denote it by XIT, uh, sorry, by XI1, XIK uh, superscript T. So this means the first training. Uh, data point which is neighbor of xit this means the last one and we put them together in order to have a d by k matrix okay uh, we show the three steps in LLA in our notation here again I repeat this here for the sake of clarification in step 1 a we find the nearest neighbors in our notation x we have xi for example for each point and we have here uh, k is 4 so we have x, uh, the first neighbor, the second neighbor, the third neighbor, and the fourth neighbor of xi. And in uh, step b, step 2, we find the weights and we denote the weights, for example, the, we denote the weight of uh, reconstruction of xi by, XI, uh, by its first neighbor with wi1, wi2, wi3, and wi4. Then we use these weights, the same weights here, in order to construct xi uh, in the low dimensional space we denoted by yi 
using its neighbors so here we had uh, we use the same neighbors that we, uh, we found in the uh, input data these are the steps and now let's uh, go into the details of these steps first step k-nearest neighbors so uh, you already know what k-nearest neighbor graph is in the course but I repeat it here a k-nearest neighbor graph is used using pairwise Euclidean distances between every data point uh, and so every data point has k neighbors so we will find here we are showing we will find uh, a matrix xi uh, for every data point and uh, for every data point xi we will have a matrix xi which shows the neighbors of this which shows the k neighbors of xi and we denote the jth neighbor of the xi by xij as i said beforehand now we are going to use this uh, in our next steps linear reconstruction by neighbors the second step of LLE what is that uh, consider the weights to be denoted by wi uh, tilde wi tilde is the weights the k weights it's a k dimensional vector uh, the k weights for reconstructing xi using its neighbors in the input space in the data space uh, and each element is denoted by this w i 1 tilde until w i k tilde if we put the, uh, the vectors w i tilde together for all n data points we will have a matrix w tilde which is a, an n by k so the rows are data points the columns are the weights, uh, the reconstruction weights uh, for the reconstruction using neighbors. And uh, what was the second step? You remember, I said we want to reconstruct every data point by a linear combination of its neighbors. So here it is exactly. We want xi to be equal to a linear combination of its neighbors use, uh, using weights. Here we have weights, here we have neighbors of xi, and here we have xi. We want this difference to be minimized. This is L2 norm, and we score it to, bec to become uh, convex. And we sum over all the n data points. Uh, we have a constraint. Uh, we want uh, all the weights for uh, reconstructing uh, every data point using its neighbors to sum to 1. Uh, this is a constraint just in order... Yeah, to make uh, the uh, the optimization problem uh, uh, well defined, and this i goes from one to n. Uh, there is one thing that you should note here. Notice here is that uh, someone might say, "What if one weight, one of the weights for reconstructing x i, is uh, one million, and one of them is minus one million, uh, and another one is one?" and the 1 million and minus 1 million cancel each other uh, we still are satisfying this you're right if you're uh, wondering this you're, you're right so this might this constraint might still uh, result in explosion of weights however in NLE as we'll see later uh, in the later slides the solution to equation 8 or this optimization is, uh, is closed for uh, and uh, it's not iterative uh, therefore uh, it doesn't uh, result in explosion of weights if we solve this optimization problem uh, iteratively then it would uh, the weights gradually start to explode uh, equation 9 uh, we d denote we are denoting this objective function here we are showing by epsilon uh, w tilde we can rewrite it in matrix form using this so uh, this summation here I'm writing it in matrix form here uh, now let's simplify this objective function equation 9 uh, I'm just saying here here we had what we had here in the previous slide now I might add this term multiply this term here this is one. How, why? Because because of the constraint. The constraint here 
can be written as one transpose w in in the vector form it can be written as this i'm using this here so it's just one multiplication by one uh, doesn't matter and then i fact right factor out w i tilde then i use here i use a formula have it from me because of the quadratic uh, feature of uh, this formula so then using this formula uh, i expand this and then i define this term as gi here we are defining it which is a k by k matrix and uh, so we will have this so this the objective function is reduced to uh, 10 and we also had a summation here don't forget about the summation so we have a summation and this objective function and we want to find the weights in order to uh, reconstruct using neighbors the, in the best way and subject to we also write that in the vector form as we had and we all we do this we have this uh, constraint for all data points uh, so now let's solve this uh, this is a constraint constraint uh, uh, optimization problem uh, in order to solve this we uh, form the Lagrangian and what is the Lagrangian if you don't know it don't worry about it I will explain it to you uh, the, I take this objective I want to minimize this so I just put it here and then I say I want to panel I want to satisfy this constraint let us penalize it let us penalize it uh, here and uh, let us penalize it but using some weights this is the weight and this is the weight which determines how much should I penalize compared to the original objective function and this uh, p penalty variable is uh, this uh, penalty weight is usually called dual variable and uh, so now you can see the, uh, the problem is minimizing this Lagrangian and the problem has become uh, uh, has been converted to an unconstrained optimization problem uh, what do, do we do in a high school uh, for optimizing a, 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 an op objective function which was unconstrained just we take the derivative and set it to zero so let's take the deri derivative of Lagrangian and set it to zero uh, the variable was w i so we take the derivative with respect to w i uh, the, the, uh, and it is uh, a vector why <laughs> I have mentioned this in previous slide uh, lectures but uh, I will repeat it here briefly uh, the derivative of a scalar with respect to a scalar is a scalar why because when you tweak uh, uh, the second scalar the first scalar changes the derivative of a scalar with respect to a vector uh, is a vector because every you element of the vector you tweak uh, uh, the scalar changes the derivative of a scalar with respect to a matrix is a matrix because every element of the matrix you tweak uh, the the scalar also changes the, uh, the derivative of a vector with respect to another vector is a matrix because every element of the second vector you tweak every element of, of uh, the first vector changes uh, also the derivative of a vector with respect to a matrix is a three tensor because every element of the matrix you change it changes every element of uh, the vector so now here we have a derivative of a scalar with respect to a vector so the derivative is a vector derivative of the first term is this derivative of the second term is this when we set it to zero uh, and then we take this to the other side uh, we will have this as uh, now give it a second here okay so we have this I put this lambda I here now we have this uh, okay now let's take derivative with uh, respect to the dual variable so 
uh, when we want to solve uh, using KKT conditions or Kirsch Kontaker conditions, we take derivative once with respect to the variable and once with respect to the du dual variable that I t uh, explained to you. And then uh, derivative of a scalar with respect to a scalar is a scalar. Derivative of the first term with respect to uh, this term, its derivative is zero with respect to lambda i. This term, its derivative is this. And when we set it to zero, we will get back the constraint that we had in equation 12. Now, uh, if I use, do, uh, do you remember this that we had? the equation here here oh uh, in this equation 15 I replace equation 14 so now I will have this which equals to 1 then if I re uh, resort this I will have lambda uh, so now I have found lambda let's replace this lambda in equation 14 again. If we do that here, we will find wi, which is this. So now we have found wi, and as I said to you, it has a closed form solution. It has a closed form solution. This gi is uh, sometimes also called uh, gram matrix uh, because it's similar to uh, xtx. Usually, everything which is in the form of xtx can be uh, named gram matrix that's why it's called G uh, now we have found the weights for reconstruction of every data point by its neighbors in the input space let's use the same weights in the embedding space in order to construct every point uh, using its neighbors in the embedding space linear embedding in linear embedding so we have here uh, we this is the optimization we have e we want every data point to be constructed by its neighbors using the same weights here we are using wij you might wonder why is it wij because here we had wij tilde but now we have wij the reason is that it's just for the simplification of uh, uh, algebraic terms we are this is the same ways but here we are saying that w we want wij to go j to go from 1 to n not to 1 to k however wij tilde j goes from 1 to k so we define it in equation 19 we say that if xj is in k nearest neighbor of xi use the same ways otherwise use the zero weights and this the j now goes from 1 to n so you will use this, that's why here we have j goes from 1 to n, compare this to here, when we had in equation 8, we had j going from 1 to k. Now uh, we say j goes from 1 to n, and we want to minimize this reconstruction using a uh, squared L2 norm, uh, subject to, we have two constraints, we say that we want uh, the mean of embedding to be zero and this to be identity matrix uh, what is this this together shows that the covariance of embedding should be identity why because what is the definition of covariance it is yi minus mean of yi mean of y summation of y i minus y bar transpose this is the the definition of covariance and if you set the mean to zero you will find exactly what we have here uh, so these two together says uh, says that i want the mean to be zero and the covariance to be identity so i want the variance of uh, the, the the variance of embedding to, to have to be equal in different directions now let's simplify the objective function in equation 18 here. So when we do that, let's write this part in matrix form. We can do it here. Recall that what capital Y has YIs in column Ys. And if we do that, 
and wi is the vector of wijs. Uh, if we do that here, I need to correct my pen. Okay. Uh, so here we have a uh, y transpose. Uh, I'm repeating this term here. I'm just repeating it. And then I can write the whole this thing so I can remove this summation and make, uh, write it in Frobenius norm. Frobenius norm is the similar to the L2 norm but for matrices is similar uh, because we already have L2 norm for matrices. But Frobenius norm for matrices means that it is uh, skew sk rt of summation of uh, s squared elements of the matrix. Uh, so we can write this and we can get rid of this summation and have Frobenius storm and we write this in matrix form. Uh, note that here we have matrix form. Note that here we have matrix form uh, for W and uh, I1 has become identity matrix. Then we can uh, left factor out Y transpose. I'm doing this. Uh, then what here I'm using this formula. Have it from me. That for matrix. It is trace of X transpose X. X is the matrix. Uh, trace of x transpose x is like inner product but for matrices. Uh, so I'm using this formula and then uh, according to the cyclic property of trace I can uh, rearrange the terms in trace so I can uh, do that if you do that take this to this part again take this to the left and you will have this. Then I define this middle term as M which is an n by n matrix, then we'll have trace of y transpose m y. So let's uh, put the uh, equation 21 in equation 18 and we'll have this. And also the constraints we can write it in matrix form, I'm doing that. So we'll have equation 23. Now let's solve this optimization problem. Note that uh, this term is already satisfied. Why? Because uh, the fact that we have eigenvector 1 with zero eigenvalue, uh, it implicitly ensures that we already have zero mean. And why do we have one eigenvalue 1 with zero eigenvalue? This is because of uh, the graph theory. In graph theory, we say that uh, if we have a Laplacian uh, uh, matrix, uh, the, the if, if, uh, Give me a second, I tell you here. In graph theory, we say that consider, uh, consider a graph, let me open a paint. So consider uh, a graph, if we have a graph which is connected, then uh, it's Laplacian, which I will define now. Uh, ha will have uh, here will have one uh, zero eigen value. If we have a graph which has two disjoint parts, it's Laplacian matrix, which I will define it has two zero eigenvalues. Generally speaking, we can say that if uh, the graph has k disjoint parts, its Laplacian will have k zero eigenvalues. Uh, so what is eigenvalue? What is, uh, sorry, Laplacian matrix? Laplacian matrix, assume that you have a uh, matrix A. Assume you have a matrix A, and this 
so you have a matrix A and this matrix A will have several rows uh, then you have yes then you have another matrix B which is a diagonal matrix where, where every element of diagonal is the summation of every row of A so the summation of this row becomes this element, the summation of this row becomes this element and if uh, the Laplacian matrix will be the, the Laplacian matrix will be B minus A this is the Laplacian matrix and now if you see here uh, what do we have here in our case we have uh, W our matrix A is W so we have W which is N by N and in each row we have the weights for reconstruction uh, of every point using its neighbors and what is the matrix B for this W it will be summation of this row which is 1 some because because of the constraint that we had here do you remember this constraint because of the constraint in equation 8 or in equation 12 and if you remember according to equation 12 the constraint here and considering that other elements in equation 19 are 0 so the summation of every row is 1 so the summation of this row is also 1 1 1 1 1 and so this is the identity matrix therefore the Laplacian of W the weight matrix is just I minus W and we have this term exactly in this M therefore uh, M also has uh, k if we have K disjoint uh, a graph of K disjoint parts uh, this M has K uh, zero eigenvalues and we assume that the graph is connected here uh, when we are uh, creating the k-nearest neighbor graph we do it we choose k in a way uh, to have uh, just uh, a, uh, a graph uh, which is connected which is con it, we don't want to have two parts in the graph and if the graph is uh, connected uh, we will have one zero eigenvalue therefore we will have uh, one zero eigenvalue and this uh, according to that uh, will, uh, this uh, the constraint of having zero mean is already satisfied and why you can read our tutorial paper for the proof it has a proof so uh, let's ignore this constraint and we will have this constraint problem with only one constraint uh, again we uh, make the Lagrangian here we have the objective function and we put the constraint here uh, using this dual variable and this why do we use trace because uh, uh, we are inner product in this uh, dual variables with the constraint and in inner product for uh, matrices we use trace and we take derivative of this Lagrangian with respect to uh, the optimization variable y uh, here and the uh, derivative of a scalar with respect to a matrix is a matrix uh, derivative of the first term is this, derivative of the second term is this, when we set it to zero and we take this part to the other side of equation we'll have this. What is this? You can see it's an eigenvalue problem. It's an eigenvalue problem and for matrix M uh, where y is the eigenvectors and uh, lambda is uh, the eigenvalues and as I said, as, as I explained to you uh, M will definitely have one zero eigen value therefore uh, we will ignore that uh, smallest eigenvalue and uh, the the eigenvector corresponding to the smallest eigenvalue and we take the rest of them and we sort because it is minimizing the problem from smallest eigenvalue to largest eigenvalue you should uh, remember that you should ignore the first eigenvalue which is zero and uh, the you, so why is found. We wanted to find the embeddings which are y. Now the L has been solved. Let's see some examples. You can see here that uh, we have uh, for example a Swiss roll here. 
It's a completely nonlinear manifold. We want to unfold it. What is the correct way to unfold it? With, uh, for example, by hand, if you want to unfold it. You take this side, you stretch it here. You take the other side by the other hand and you stretch it there. So it will become uh, like a flat uh, plane and you will have this exactly it, so it has unfolded this manifold correctly why because it is using k nearest neighbor graph and it, it is reconstructing every point by its neighbors and when we are on the manifold the neighbors are uh, close to it uh, to it on the same manifold so it doesn't care about so it doesn't say that this point is the uh, neighbor of this point uh, if we do, if it uh, considers Euclidean distances, it will ruin the manifold, like what PCA does. However, it takes uh, care about the neighbors, and that's why it's not a nonlinear method, and it unfolds the manifold correctly. And uh, if you can see, the it doesn't show, but the mean here is zero, because because of what? Because of the constraint that we had here, the mean should be zero. And we also see that the variance is almost rectangular. Uh, the, I should say, consider this. These are almost equal. It's because of uh, having equal covariance because of this constraint. Here, you can see a better example. Uh, LLE embedding for the Frey phase data set. And as you can see, the uh, similar faces have uh, fall uh, close to each other yeah, and the faces which are much different are far away from each other and as it here it doesn't show but here is zero and here is zero because the mean of embedding is zero and as you can see here compare this distance this with this with this these are equal almost because of the constraint of having identity covariance matrix so uh, as you c we have some tutorial paper we have look uh, tutorial paper on LLE you can read that and it's a good uh, tutorial there is also a good tutorial uh, YouTube video by Professor Ali Gozzi you can see those uh, we have these are references uh, the first this is the original paper on LLE uh, in 2000 in science journal uh, this is a uh, follow-up paper on LLE uh, in the Journal of Machine Learning Research so it's it's good to talk about it a little bit uh, LLE introduced uh, the concept of thinking globally but fitting locally almost many many uh, not unsupervised manifold learning methods have this idea they fit locally but they think globally about the whole uh, manifold uh, memorize this sentence fit locally think globally this is an important concept in mindful learning uh, also this is our tutorial paper okay I hope this was helpful and have fun